finally here, guys. Tomorrow is the Yorkshire Three Peaks Fell Race, something we trained so hard for, probably my toughest training block to date. There's going to be 830 participants, of which some of the best fell runners in the country should be turning up. This is such an iconic, famous race. We've got three big mountains to get up, separated by marathon efforts between each for 23 and a half miles, five and a half thousand foot of elevation gain, and the toughest race I've ever done. We've got some big goals. My A goal is to go sub three hours 40. That would be an A class time, just above the elite runners. We've then got a B goal of sub three hours 50, and a C goal of sub four hours. I really do think the A goal is pushing my limits. I'm not sure I'm capable of it. Everything I've done on the course in training would suggest not, but it's not all about the race. The course means a lot to me as well. I used to be a professional ballet dancer and had my career cut short. It's something I still regret today and something I didn't handle very well in my mid twenties. I piled on a load of weight, got out of shape, and it wasn't until I was offered a charity walk on the Three Peaks that I found my new passion for running and exercise. That was six years ago. I did the course back then in 11 hours. I'm now looking to do it in under three hours 40, and that is going to stay in my mind throughout the day. I'm very fortunate to have some support tomorrow. Bob and Nick are gonna come along, and before we sign off for the night, I wanna give you a quick idea on what I'm gonna do on the nutrition side of things. So you all know I've been trying mountain fuel. I'm gonna be taking the sports jelly with me. This is gonna be used as a backup and basically between climbs where I need something easy for my stomach to absorb. I'm gonna have the flapjack, uh, probably the dates one, maybe even the ginger one, just for something more solid. But the main fueling source is gonna be, and I'm sorry if I pronounced this wrong, the Lucha Delitos. These are energy blocks and they come wrapped in these palm leaves. Really smart, it's with guava and acai berry, and basically it is a fully natural fueling source. Right now I've got a mix of emotions, I'm excited, I'm nervous, I don't know what to expect, but overall I just can't wait to stand on a start line with 800 more fell runners and soak in the atmosphere. So I'm just gonna try and enjoy it as much as I can, until Ingleborough, because Ingleborough's gonna hurt no matter what we do. I'll catch you all in the morning. Her alarm goes off and she gets up to watch the morning news Doesn't work no more but tells a lot of stories about her youth Drinks more lately, ain't got pills in many different colors too Morning light is showing, she moves the chair to look out at her view But her shop was bought right across the street And it stands where the sunrise used to be in the afternoon Walking away, your words are lost on me. It's taking everything not to turn. I'm like, oh shit, I've been doing this a long time. Lost in my What an incredible atmosphere. I've never been a part of a start quite like that. The feeling of camaraderie and just the noise from the crowd was insane. It drove us up that first climb to the top of Penny Ghent. It's 1,500 foot of vert, about three and a half miles long. And my game plan was to conserve energy. We didn't take on any fuel at this point. I wanted to make sure that there was blood in my stomach when I took in my first energy block. We were keeping on top of hydration though, and the views across Horton were stunning, even though it was a bit 
claggy, you could still see droves of runners coming up that first climb. I was scheduled to summit Penny Ghent around 36 minutes. We did it in 34, so two minutes ahead of schedule. At this point, I took on my first Lucho de Litos energy block. They're about 140 calories a piece, 35 grams of carbs. So I was aiming to take one every 40 minutes. This would give me my maximum 250 calories per hour. The next seven and a half miles to Ribblehead is all downhill, flat with a couple of kickers, but it's quite technical terrain in places. Despite this, we managed six and a half minute miles. I was feeling really strong at this point and got to Ribblehead in one hour 29. The target was one hour 30, so again, still ahead of schedule. I got to see Nick and Bob at this point, get refueled up with um, a litre of water and some more energy blocks. Yeah. <laughs> Tonking on mate, you're doing really well. Really good time. Yeah. Have you got, I've got you down about 126, 127 mate. Do you want any food on? Uh, I need another drink, another water. Another water? Yeah, yeah. Please. Yeah, I'll take two, two of them, I'll grab something else in a bit. All right. All right. Water's here Billy, if you want it. Nice. Okay. That didn't go very well, did it? <laughs> Sorry pal. And then we set out to Wernside, which is where the real battle begins. The popular Three Peaks walking route goes up a flagged, gradual climb, but we go up the side of the mountain on private land. You cut through a farm and end up on some marshy, boggy land. I lost my footing three or four times, one of which was knee deep. When I pulled it out, the other leg went in. I was getting sapped of energy and every false summit was a drainer mentally. We we're going up into the mist and the cloud here so you couldn't see where the summit is. All you could hear was the ringing of cowbells. This climb just seems to get steeper the further up you get. It's 1300 foot of vert in less than two miles and a lot of people were starting to struggle up here. I managed to find my pace getting towards the top and overtook three or four runners and using the cowbells as a guider, I managed to come from through the mist, dab in and hit the top of Wernside in two hours and eight minutes. Unfortunately, this had me way behind schedule. I was expecting to be more like two hours, two, two hours, three minutes to here. So we had it all to do now. The terrain up here is so slippy and rocky. The Scott Super Track RC didn't handle it well at all. I ran into a couple of walkers and walls on the way down. Once you get off Wernside, you're onto more tarmac and flatter terrain. Managed to get my foot down here and reach the penultimate checkpoint where I got to see Nick again get a bit more water, my last little bit of fuel, and really kick on. I was feeling good at this point, but 16 miles into the race, and with Ingleborough to come, I knew the pain was gonna set in soon. And sure enough, about a mile, a mile and a half up the next climb, my legs started to suffer. I couldn't take on any fuel, I couldn't take in any water, I was starting to get a bit nauseous, and I still had the big 1,400 foot climb ahead of me. At this stage in a race, having pushed so hard and no blood flow in my stomach, there was no wonder that happened. But I managed to march on and overtake another three or four runners. This gave me a bit of confidence. And I think the last energy block I'd had just before the climb of Ingleborough was fueling me forward. The aim was to summit Ingleborough in three hours. And while I knew we'd lost some time, we got there in three hours too, so I had it all to do on the five mile descent into Horton. On the way down, I soon realised how technical this section actually is. It was slippy, rocky, and to be quite frank, dangerous. Um, it was more like a battlefield than a fell race. There was people on the side of the trails holding their head, their legs, quite a lot of really bad injuries out there but I managed to keep my whereabouts about me and stay on my feet. We overtook took a few more runners on this section and about two and a half miles in, my legs were completely spent. I was running on fumes. I went past Jason, my coach, who gave us some encouraging words that really helped. Also Russ Grayson from my running club. But unfortunately, with about a mile and a half to go, we had a really bad fall. Um, I bashed my thigh and my leg went completely dead. I had to hobble for about the next two or three minutes to get it going again. Um, and looking down at my watch, I knew we were cutting it close. We literally had seconds to come in below my ear goal and I was only getting slower. The diversion at the end towards the finish was really confusing as well, but I managed to follow the flags. I had no idea how much longer the race was gonna be, whether it was gonna be 0.1 of a mile, 0.2. All I could do was go flat out for that last half mile and ignore the pain. And then I finally could hear the announcers 
and the crowd cheering and I could see the finish line, I just wasn't sure whether I was going to get over it in time. Yeah, it's brilliant. Let's put it in now. Yeah. Come on, Darren, keep pushing! Come on, Darren, keep going. Come on, that way. Billy, Billy. Brilliant, mate. Billy, Billy. Smashed it. How do you feel? Well, they know two miles to go. Yeah, it's better than you think it is. No, it was. It was literally 3.39, 20 seconds. Was it? I've been up here bloody clock watching. Literally, for the last mile, it's like, that's quite a fine man. You're going really well. Three hours, 39 minutes and 20 seconds. We did it with 40 seconds to spare, guys. And in 36th place, so I'm over the moon with that. What an incredible race. The atmosphere throughout was brilliant. And some of the remote locations that the support got to was pretty impressive. We'll talk a little bit on that injury in just a second, but first of all, a big thanks to Nick and Bob for the support throughout the day. Cavill Coaching as well for getting me in great shape, but they do so much more than that. And of course, the marshals for giving up their time and being out in those conditions. Right, a couple of quick takeaways from the race itself. Lucho Delitos energy blocks are fantastic, all natural, went down really easily, my stomach seemed to digest them quite well, easy to eat as well, they didn't melt in my pocket, the fact that it's got palm leaf wraps means that you can actually put them by the roadside if you want, they are biodegradable, so all round brilliant product. I'm going to use it up to marathon distance going forward, maybe complemented with the odd gel just to give me something different in my stomach, but they're definitely a keeper. Shoe choice, the Scott Super Track RC, worked very well in general, very comfortable, good all round grip, but I really struggled on that wet rock. I was slipping and sliding all over the place. I need to find a solution for that, and I may well have done going into the Winterfell series. So watch this space, because I've got a review coming up very soon on an alternative fell shoe. And moving on to performance, I'm really happy all round. I think I paced it very well, and going into mile 16, I'd put in quite a lot of effort. So at that point, I was okay with my stomach starting to shut down, because I knew I only had another seven or so miles to go. I can't wait to take this race and the gained fitness into some fell races in my local area this winter. We just need to see how I get on with this leg injury before we know when I'm ready to race again. It's a dead leg I think, it's black, it's blue and it's very swollen but a couple of days and you never know it might settle down a little bit. Well guys that's the Yorkshire Three Peaks fell race. What a cracking event. I'll see you all with the next one. See you later. Five, four, three, two,